I think the biggest factor of uh, being interested in this project is that I was asked. <laughs> and uh, no pun intended. I mean, it, it, no, not making a joke. It was, it's just nice to be asked to be some, uh, a part of something like this. And uh, the, the project is a terrific project, you know, to have uh, the idea of having, uh, uh, you know, some of the great uh, American trumpet players coming together and working with students um, and, and putting together uh, a nice product. Um, it's, uh, so I guess it was a combination of being asked to come and do something at the school. That's nice. Uh, in some ways, I wish I had a little more time to spend time with the students and really get a little more hands-on. Uh, the focus definitely here is, is the, re the recording, and, and that's great. Uh, and that kind of makes me a little uptight just being ready for that stuff. Uh, but certainly, being asked to come and then the experience of being part of something as big as this uh, is, is just neat. I mean, to share a recording with Chris and Mark and uh, whomever you're able to get in the future um, would be great. I mean, I think it's a great thing. It's a great concept for CD. Um, I know in the past they've had something like the London trumpet sound and things like that where they brought great trumpet players together and they've produced a trumpet ensemble type of thing. But to actually uh, just pinpoint a few to come and to put different types of music on a CD, uh, I just think is a tremendous thing. It's been a privilege to be here in Columbus at the Shope School. And uh, I have to say, I think the facilities here are absolutely superb. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here. Uh, the little theater that we're in is a fantastic theater. The uh, theater that we're doing the recording in is uh, just a beautiful, I mean, it, it looks beautiful, it sounds beautiful. The wind ensemble sounds great there. The students are definitely have a great situation here at the school. Uh, beautiful facilities, lovely town, lovely downtown. I just got a cup of tea down on Broadway, and uh, superb. As to the um, faculty, obviously working with Dr. Rumblow has been great. Um, working with uh, Fred Cohen on his new composition, um, you know, that's just, it's a treat. I think one of the interesting things about the project uh, is initially it was curricularly based. You know, what great experiences can I give my students next? And uh, I think all the faculty here, you know, ha pose that question to themselves frequently. What's next? What can I do for my students to further their careers, further their love of music, uh, um, their relationship with music making? And um, we've had in a few different guests over the years to, to work with the Wind Ensemble. Uh, we recorded a CD with Joe Alessi. Um, and it, um, it was really inspiring because of the master class and because of what our students take away, even if they don't have individual time with these artists, the, uh, being on stage during a recording session is, I've found to be really educational, to know what makes that artist tick, what they're concerned with primarily, um, what they think is acceptable and not acceptable. You know, uh, in terms of phrasing, and, and no, I need to do that again, or you know, those types of things. Um, I think really uh, shows a sense of what the mature musical artist experiences in terms of listening, which obviously the core of music making, 
we listen first, we hear inside, and, and, and we move outward. Um, our students get that lesson over and over and over in these recording sessions, and it's, it's, a, it's a really incredible educational experience. The idea of repertoire came up and, and you asked last year if I could be part of that and I wasn't able to so you got two other folk that, that did that project and that, that was a shame because I would have liked to have done that project uh, and been a part of that. That, was, that sounded like a fun thing but then okay so now this year what did we find? Um, and so for me one of it was uh, I want to play music that I enjoy um, and yet I, I, you don't want to just sort of just because I enjoy it, it needs to still be something worthwhile. And um, I think discovering just a couple of years ago this dramatic essay by Clifton Williams, which really has fallen out of knowledge by a lot of trumpet players. It was first done by Don Jacoby years and years ago on an old LP when he was a clinician for Con Selmer, and, uh, or just Con, I think, at the time. And, um, and so uh, I was fortunate to have uh, a uh, friend of mine who recommended this piece and said, Have you, do, you, do you know this piece? And I said I didn't and out it came and it's been a favorite of mine. It's just a bravura trumpet piece. Then the other thing was uh, a, a new piece. I always like to have pieces that are new and obviously because of my faith walk, I like something that tells people a little bit about who I am and what makes, makes me tick as a person. And so I had asked a friend, Greg Pascuzzi, um, if, well, actually he offered to write this uh, arrangement of a piece for me and asked what hymn I'd like it based on and I've always loved the hymn When Morning Gilds the Skies and, uh, and he had just done a lovely version of this originally for trumpet and piano. When uh, we dug it out, Joe and I dug it out um, uh, a year or so ago, I could hear some flugelhorn in this and then as we began to perform the piece, I could hear that this was gonna work well for a, a wind band, and I, I could hear the wind band in my head, I could hear a brass band in my head, and so subsequently I've asked Greg to do both a brass band and a wind band version of this, which I've performed again, and, uh, and so again, it was an effort to get this new piece out. It's not just a hymn arrangement, it's a rhapsodic piece based on the hymn, and so I think it's lovely written for the colors of the bands. And then of course, you recommended a new piece, and new pieces are always great to have, and you had a guy in mind, you had Fred Cohn, who wrote this uh, new piece, Curls of Motion, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a challenge for me, because I'm someone that doesn't, I, it, it takes me a long time to get into a new piece. Um, and so this was a challenge to me to sort of say, all right, we're going to do this, and it's on the schedule, and it challenged me to have to learn something new, and it took me out of my comfort zone a little bit, and that was great, because I need that as an older player. I need to be sometimes taken out of my comfort zone and stretched so to find out if I can still be about doing the business. And it's great for us, too, I and mean, we try to do um, you know, several premieres a year, uh, and, and to do one as part of this project is, is you know, I think a real good part of our students' education. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we're dealing with new music, we're dealing with composers, and on a somewhat of a regular basis, it's great to be able to share that. And to have a new composer, uh, Fred just joined us a year ago as the director of the School of Music and also a composer. And uh, to have a composer in-house, um, which this school's mostly been music education and performance-oriented, and we did not have a, a composition component. Uh, to have a, a composer in-house, I thought this is a great, you know, project that maybe he would like to be a part of and he was more than willing and we got several universities to buy into the consortium uh, to make sure that uh, number one it was funded but number two that there would be subsequent performances. Mm. That's great and he's been great to work with. He's been a joy for me to be able to talk to and just say you know what I think you know how it fits a little better for trumpet and uh, and he's, he's been really terrific and uh, so it's a lot of fun a lot of fun to do so I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. <laughs>